Hello and welcome to College World. This is the series of C3 tutorials and we're already up to chapter 4. Now, chapter four is a different chapter, something you've never that you've never crossed, you've never crossed the group, okay, whatever, something you've never seen before, because simply it's just different. So it's numerical methods, and it deals with something called where we're just trying to find roots of functions. The good part about this chapter is that it helps you understand functions more. It helps you think of them from a different angle, and it introduces you to something called iteration, which you will be using oops later on so numerical methods in this chapter first of all as I said we're going to be trying to find roots so the first part of the tutorial is to explain to you what roots even are and then after that we're going to see the two methods of finding roots which is going to be our second part and third part which is finding roots graphically and we're also going to use iterative methods which as I said is something you'll be needing later on so we're going to be using iteration after knowing how to find them, this will leave us with the fourth and last part. It's usually the tips and tricks, but it's more rules, tips, tricks. Because it will just take iteration even in depth. Or it can just jump it up with iteration. But until now, this is going to be how the, the tutorial will go. It's very short, very simple, very easy. Just grasp it on and get it over with. So, let us first discuss what roots are. So, as I said, this chapter basically explains how to find approximations for complex roots. What do I mean? First of all, what are roots? Roots are solutions. Solutions to what? To the equation where we equate a function to zero. So, if we want to have f of x equal to zero, the solutions of x are going to be our roots. So, let us take an example, numerically, very simple example. Here, if we have this graph. Let's say f of x equals to x squared minus 4. You know that this is a difference of 2 squared and x is actually minus, oops, sorry. x is actually minus 2, x minus 2 into x plus 4. And that would mean if you want f of x to equal to 0, your x is either, sorry. So your x is either going to be plus or minus 2. In other words, your graph is going to be a parabola here. Let me draw it correctly, so 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, let's say this is going to be your parabola, this is, or this is going to be 2, this is the gain, crossing the x-axis, as you remember when we did lines, uh, whenever you did lines, y equal mx plus b, your b was the y-intercept when it crossed the y, here is just when it crossed the so your roots are your x-intercept. What is special about these roots is that you're going here, your y is positive and then it hits zero and becomes negative. Here your y is positive and then it hits zero and it becomes negative. It's when you find the root, it's basically the point before which and after which the signs of the y are different. So what is also special about the root, it is that y changes the sign. Because it's zero, so before it, it will generally be negative, and after it will be positive, or the opposite. And that would be the general thing about roots. What we're doing, this is what a root is. But what we're doing in this chapter is that we're dealing with complex roots. Once you cannot just simply find here like a difference of two squares. So this chapter basically explains how to find approximations for complex roots, of the equation f of x equal to zero graphically and using iteration. So let us explain the graphic method. So how do you find the root graphically? Uh, in general, as I said, if you find an interval in which f of x change sign, then the their interval must contain a root. So the questions will come like this: Show that the function here and you are given a function that is e to the power x goes back to the previous chapter which is exponential functions and such and 2x minus 3 and show that it has equal to 0 show it has a root at or actually it says a root between uh, x equals 0 0.5 and x equals 0 0.6 the way you solve questions in this chapter is that you say okay so they want 
they want to see what happens when x is equal to 0 0.5. So f of 0 0.5, you're going to say e to the power 0 0.5 plus 1 minus 3, which is e 0 0.5 minus 2. And you're going to find that this is going to actually equal to minus 0 0.351, etc, etc, etc. Then you're going to do the same for the second part, where it's 0 0.6. And we will find that it's going to give you e to the power 0 0.6 uh, plus 1.2 minus 3. And that would give you 0 0.0222, etc, etc, etc. Now, what you do next is that you see, oh, this is negative and this is positive. So, what you state here, and this is your answer, it's all about this statement here. You're going to say that f of x change sign between 0 0.5 and time between 0 0.5 and uh, 0 0.6 actually it's never equal to that sorry uh, so yes between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 thus there is a root that exists exists between them so it's a two-point question it is pretty straightforward and easy to score. However, it is crucial to state that because there is a change of sign in the interval, there is a root in the interval. Substituting the endpoints here is not enough. It only gives you half the points. However, I want to add something here that when there is a change in, in sign, that is the, uh, it can also mean that there is a discontinuity. So there is this is this is the only single exception. What the, do I mean? There is a discontinuity. Our famous example of f of x equal to one of x. 1 over x, sorry. So here the graph is going to be something like this. And you do know that here, this is actually positive and here there is negative. But here there exists no root. It never, There is no x-intercept. And this would be the only exception to our rule. Here we know that the, fr the, the sign on the left is different from the sign on the right of the zero and it changed sign in it changed sign. However, x is zero is not a root because it never crosses the axis. And that will be your exception. Uh, now things can get a bit more complex. You can have they can ask you to solve an ex example like this, where they tell you that show that what if you have y equal ln x and y equal 1 over x, first of all, graph them. You know that the graph of ln over x is actually this graph where it crosses its 1. And then you know that 1 over x is going to be something like this where the y is an asymptote and the x are asymptotes. Here you see that there is one meeting point. So there is one root when you're equating the two. And then if you want to do it graphically, what you're going and so the second, that was the first part of the equation, the question. Second part, they tell you that show that there is a root in the interval 1.7 and 1.8. What you're going to do is that you're going to say, okay, so let's use green. So you know that lin x equals to 1 over x, and you want to say lin x minus 1 over x is equal to 0. Uh, and this is your new function, and then you're going to replace it by, uh, you're going to replace this where you're going to say f of 1.7 equals to something and then f of 1.8 equals to another something and you're going to state that there is a change in sign and that means there is one root and that would verify your graph or your graph would verify your answer and this is how you're going to be deal with graphical uh, proving of roots in numerical methods simple and easy